Fighter jets, cell shading, and a whole lot of boom. Brace yourself, Vector Thrust is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sidestrafe, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game many are considering a spiritual successor to Ace Combat. Now, with that said, this is an early access title, of course, available on Steam. The price is currently $14.99, and I believe that will increase over time. Now, whether the game is early access or not, if you are charging any amount of money for a game, you have to make sure that there is some level of quality there, that there is a decent amount of gameplay provided. It's one thing if you're offering a free alpha test or a beta, but in this case, $15 low amount or not, you definitely have to give something to the customer. With that said, I was indeed skeptical getting into this one. First of all, I'm not really much of a flight sim guy. I'm not really good in the sky. I don't know a lot about the maneuvers and the planes. I'm better at ground combat titles. But uh, it does pique my interest and I thought I'd give it a shot. I wasn't too sure about the cell shaded or animated look either. But I will say that getting into it and maxing out my graphics, anti-aliasing up, full texture resolution and everything, the game actually looks really good and I'm sure that YouTube isn't doing it justice. I am pleasantly surprised by the visuals and it has started to grow on me. Now that doesn't mean that the visuals are absolutely without fault. There are a couple of discrepancies, mostly when discussing particle effects. The explosions, the vapor trails, smoke, uh, there's not much in the way of debris when you destroy a jet. Uh, the tracer fire, things like that. The lens flare in this game is absolutely terrible. It's more like you end up getting this gray circle or white circle on your screen when you start to look at the sun. Uh, just in general, pretty poor in that department. I hope that it's something that can be improved over time. Again, this is an advanced alpha early beta, so you know the things that we're seeing here, maybe they're just placeholders, I don't know. Uh, and I do get that this game is going for an animated look, but I think that they could probably do a little bit better of a job in that department. But again, not a huge deal, just me nitpicking for the most part. Moving away from graphics, I want to talk about the audio a little bit, and this is of course uh, considering that this is a beta and uh, a lot of the assets in this title are currently placeholder. Uh, the audio is not jaw-dropping, it's not going to take advantage of your expensive headset or 5.1 surround speaker system. Uh, the bitrate in regards to the engines sounds a bit low in some cases. Uh, the, the guns and the explosions just kind of lackluster. And the voiceover stuff, which I'm pretty sure is temporary from the forum post that I read. Uh, the voiceover stuff is atrocious. I think that it's one guy who is using some voice modulation software to make himself uh, sound different for each of the pilots. But uh, in many cases, you just get somebody uh, that sounds like one of the chipmunks or maybe the Jolly Green Giant. So I don't know, it's pretty bad. And uh, hey, devs, if you're watching this and you need some voiceover work, you know where to find me. All right, so enough about the aesthetics. Let's talk gameplay, because at the end of the day, that's what is going to matter most. Is this title worth the coin? Does this game have what you need to succeed as an arcade fighter pilot? And I can safely say yes. I think that's indeed the selling point here. Uh, a lot of positive feedback in the forums from what I've seen. There's always going to be uh, the complaint here and there, but uh, generally good feedback. A lot of people recommending this game. Uh, a lot of people in Japan are apparently taking an interest in this because their Ace Combat franchise is failing them. I think because they've lost sight of what most gamers want from an arcade flight game. They just want to get to the fighter combat. You know, they don't want any repetitive uh, turret sequences within a helicopter. They want to be in jets constantly dogfighting with lots of well thought out action. Now in this game, you can see clearly here by what we're demonstrating that this title has that in spades. It just handles very well, and speaking of handling, I am of course using an Xbox 360 gamepad, and I can say that it works flawlessly with this title. I did have to go in and set my options to default because for some reason something wasn't working correctly uh, when I jumped in, but once I set it to default, everything was fine. 
Uh, I really wouldn't expect too much out of using the mouse and keyboard if you're used to a game like War Thunder. Uh, this game doesn't have an instructor uh, AI that's kind of helping you out a little bit. So I would invest in a good gamepad if you like these types of games, or maybe even if you have a, a joystick. With that said, it's probably not impossible to use a mouse and keyboard. Just don't go in with expectations set too high in regards to the usage of such devices. Beyond handling, the game does feel pretty solid in the combat department, although I'm probably not the best person to discuss such matters, especially in an arcade game. I felt that it worked pretty well, especially with the gamepad. Uh, it's more so about just acquiring a target, getting within range, locking on and hitting them with your missile systems. If uh, all else fails and you're close enough, then engage with uh, machine guns or cannons which are actually pretty effective even though you're moving pretty quickly here in a jet and not a World War II fighter. Further discussing the weapon systems, if you take a look at the lower right hand corner of the screen you'll see that it lists our machine guns and missile systems uh, with ammunition counters. Obviously this is an arcade game so you will reload uh, mid-air once we fire our two missiles on the wings we'll then load up another two and uh, you can see that we have quite a few of them here so yes <laughs> not realistic at all instead of going in with five or six uh, on a real jet you're taking in sometimes 50 or more but uh, you can choose between a wide variety of uh, payloads missiles rockets and bombs really depending on the mission at hand. Speaking of missions, there is a lot to do in regards to single player. For example, this is skirmish mode where I'm able to go in, pick the map, time of day, I can select how many AI I'm facing and their difficulty level, I can create teams, I can set the objective, I can pick any jet that I want and just have a little bit of fun. Let's say I'm short on time, I got 10-15 minutes, I want to play a quick skirmish, I can go into this game and do that. I really don't have to commit to a multiplayer match right off the bat if I don't want to. It's also nice to be able to just go in, maybe do some free flight, or just practice against some easy AI if I just feel like goofing off, or maybe just even getting used to the game. I found that this was the perfect way for me to get used to my uh, gamepad and the controls. Beyond the skirmish mode, the game does have some pre-made scenarios, and this one I'm tasked with taking on some fortress bombers before they leave uh, friendly airspace. Basically they are some really massive sci-fi bombers that definitely pack a wallop. Uh, they are of course being escorted. Here you can see we're just picking our J-35D and the RB-27 air-to-air uh, -air missile so that we can hopefully take those sons of guns down. Now, you know that whole thing about never engaging a bomber from the 6 o'clock position? Well, that kind of holds true in this game as well. Except it's about 100 times worse, as you can see. They've got plenty of anti-aircraft guns and, oh yes, missiles that fly out of their backsides. Fantastic, and a great way to fail the mission. But, uh, moving right along, let's go ahead and take a look at the mission editor here a little bit. I have actually no idea what I'm looking at here, uh, but I thought I would show off a little bit of it. Uh, this is in the game, it's in the main menu, you can just jump into it. You can see that there's a bunch of uh, custom parameters that you can set. So I think that if you're really looking for some sort of flight game to dig into uh, in regards to editing, well this one might be your ticket. Uh, there's so much here, it's just overwhelming and again this game currently as of this video costs $14.99 and there's already so much that the community can do with it even just outside of what the developers are providing. Now I'm sure a lot of you are wondering about multiplayer. It always at the end of the day it always comes down to multiplayer. Single player is fine, skirmish, whatever, editor, yeah yeah yeah. Let me hear about the multiplayer but unfortunately what you're seeing here is pretty much uh, the extent of my multiplayer experience at least for today. Um, the way this is working currently is that multiplayer was just recently added to the title and you have to opt into a separate beta through Steam in order to access multiplayer and currently it just seems to be lobby based where somebody hosts a match and you join it. In this case the match that I joined, the only one that was available 
wasn't really responding. Now with that said, I really do want to take a look at Vector Thrust's multiplayer component. I'm sure I just had a little bit of bad luck today. Perhaps I wasn't on during a peak hour. And well, let's face it, not a lot of people know about this title. Uh, the multiplayer component is fresh. It is on a beta branch, so it's not easy to access just yet. But I think that it will become uh, a highlight for sure. So in conclusion, is this game worth it? $14.99 currently, early access. Eventually, it's going to top out at $24.99 launch price. Even at launch price, $24.99, I can't really see a problem with that price point, uh, considering the amount of content that's already within the title. Uh, and there's a whole lot of jets in this game, so looking forward to unlocking some cooler ones, some newer modern jets like the Raptor. But, uh, you know, is this game going to be for the hardcore flight simmer? No, definitely not. If you're playing DCS or maybe even flying around in Arma, then this is just <laughs> the opposite, the complete opposite of what you're getting in those titles. But uh, if you're really into arcade combat, if you're into Ace Combat or Hawks or any of those old games, then I have to suggest you take a look at it, or at least, at very least, keep an eye on it. But with that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for joining me on the premiere episode of Brace Yourself. Stay tuned for a whole lot more, and I will definitely see you on the next one.